following program on Ada Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. A very good evening and you're joining with us on Gen XYZ and as usual this is a program where we talk about topics or issues pertaining the youth in the current context. Now today we are going to talk about a problem that has been prevalent in the past few months and a, an issue that has been spreading like fire these past few months So, and a, an issue that has been making headlines as well. So let me read a few of the headlines that has been coming up in the past few months. Uh, November 2022, school kids using ice on the rice. December 18th, 2022, 75 arrested during drug raids near school. December 5th, 2022, narcotic pills found inside Gampa school canteens. And then this year, January 7th, 2023, Mirisa drug, uh, drug Bust Court grants permission to detain five suspects for seven days. And again, January 16th, 2023, drug smugglers nabbed by Navy on high seas brought to Colombo. Now, yes, we are going to be talking about the drug menace that has been spreading in Sri Lanka recently. And sad to say that it has been come to a point where it has spread inside schools as well. Now, concerns have been rising amongst parents, authorities, and even people, you know, scared to send children to schools thinking that, you know, they might be exposed to drugs. Now, to talk on this topic, we have two special guests. They are not very new on this show. They have been on Gen XYZ prior as well, but they are also on the frontliners of this program. So with that, I would like to introduce you to Mr. Ajit Rohana, who is the senior DIG in the Southern Province, and also uh, Dr. Ashok Priyadarshana, who is a psychologist and a lecturer. Uh, sir and doctor, thank you so much for taking the time today to join me on the show today. So to start off our discussion, as I mentioned earlier, with the headlining issues and according to an estimate, 40,000 students have been found to be users of narcotic drugs and searches of school premises will be continued to contain this menace. Now this is of the recent statistics and this was especially in the Western province. This is how serious this issue is. Now since, sir, you're in the front line itself, how severe is this issue right now? Thank you for the invitation and uh, as you mentioned, uh, I'm at, at the moment um, I'm functioning as the senior DIG Southern Province, but uh, before my transfer to Southern Province, I was the senior DIG uh, Crimes and Traffic and the Police Narcotic Bureau was under my command. And before that I was the DIG Legal and I monitored the situation, especially in respect of the laws and regulations uh, uh, of drug maintenance. So as you mentioned, uh, day by day, the number has been increased in respect of uh, school children and adolescent. Uh, they are using drugs. And I would like to mention the, the history of this drug maintenance uh, in Sri Lanka. Initially, in 1979, long time ago, the first uh, person was arrested by uh, Hikadua police uh, along with heroin drugs. And that is the first case reported in Sri Lanka uh, where the uh, drug trafficker was arrested along with heroin. Then thereafter, our law was uh, change in uh, 1984 and uh, death penalty was introduced in respect of drug offences. So we have our penal code uh, which consists of various uh, penal sections but apart from the, the, the penal code 
the dangerous drug ordinance is the only enactment which deals with capital punishment. Uh, if you uh, have uh, uh, trafficked uh, certain drugs like heroin uh, or after the uh, 2022 amendment ICE, so uh, if that amount is there, so uh, if you are con convicted by the court, uh, the, the capital punishment could be imposed. Uh, and at the inception, uh, generally this particular issue uh, or the problem was confined to uh, the areas where this uh, tourist uh, or the tourism industry uh, was being implemented. But uh, at the moment, now it has uh, been uh, spread to, I mean, all over the country, uh, rural areas. And as you mentioned, uh, the police conducted uh, several uh, search operations uh, in the in the areas uh, of the the uh, where the schools are situated, and uh, they have found various items. And if we take if we uh, discuss uh, the drugs. There are varieties of drugs. Now, uh, we have been using, or Sri Lanka uh, had uh, a drug called cannabis or ganja, uh, and uh, our people had been using that drug for a period of, I mean, four or five uh, decades or centuries, and after that, heroin was introduced, and after methamphetamine, no ice, like synthetic drugs have been introduced. So, uh, my perception as a police officer, as well as the former police media spokesman, how do we deal with this issue? The number one, we need to reduce the supply. We need to reduce the supply. How can we reduce the supply? So that is our duty. That is the duty of law enforcement authorities. According to the, the, the provisions of the dangerous drugs ordinance, the police have been empowered to deal with this issue. And apart from that, the officials of, officials of uh, excise department. So they have been empowered to deal with this issue. On one hand, we need to reduce the supply. But on the other hand, the society needs to reduce the demand. Reduce the demand. So how do you reduce the demand? So the demand means, so every day, two, three people or five, six persons, including adolescent or the school children, so they are joining the drug addict community. So therefore, on one hand, Law enforcement authorities, so we are collecting information, we are gathering information, we are planning operations, we are uh, planning operations with Sri Lanka Navy, or our stakeholders like customs, immigrations, airport authorities, and we are detecting drugs. But on the other hand, the parents, they have a responsibility, the teachers, they have a responsibility, the leaders of religious institutions, they have a responsibility, and all the times, uh, they should be the friends of school children, uh, the, the teachers, they need to have a dialogue with school children and they need to monitor the behaviors of uh, school children. And accordingly, uh, we, we, we can solve this problem otherwise, so day by day it is being spread. All right, sir. Now to catch up on one point, you said like the society needs to know how to decrease their demand. So with that point, I would like to pose the question to you, doctor. Now, since you're a psychologist, like have you had any cases or have you had any patients dealt with, you know, people who are using drugs? Have you been able to treat them? And what's the occurrence so far? Yes, yes, uh, Shanali, that's a very good question indeed, because I've been dealing with this uh, problem for May, maybe uh, 10, 10 years or so, right? Especially even in my colleagues, of course. Now, this has been one of the major issues, undoubted. I mean, it's, it's, there is no doubt at all, right? Uh, 
but first of all we need to think why 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 do people uh, take drugs exactly right? if i ask the same question from you why do people take drugs drugs you know what what is the what is the motive behind right like that so in my opinion according to certain research as well so when it comes to motivation so everybody has heard of you know motivation what motivation is right there are two important facts when it comes to uh, motivation motives internal as well as external sometimes you are pushed in the meantime you are pulled by certain external facts you are pushed sometimes in the meantime you are pulled by external facts when it comes to drugs especially what i have felt and what we have discussed as professionals this pulling factors seem to be playing a quite you know a huge role in 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 pulling individual towards drugs like for instance uh, uh, you just popularize okay this is the drug that you can take to to uh, uh, boost your self esteem uh, to to boost your personality like that you know it 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 has become a part of the personality a pa- personality trait or something like that so this external motives seem to be strengthened by certain individuals sometimes media even sometimes negative marketing for instance even negative marketing seem to be playing a, a key role there as well through that this external motives are strengthened by different different communities who want to popularize these drugs and etc as a result of that even even adults and they have been the biggest target i suppose nowadays right and uh, so that that need is created that interest is created within themselves through this you know the external uh, motives even sometimes we we talk uh, this uh, we, we call it the classical conditioning theory which is a theory which is highly used uh, in in marketing field where you use sometimes you know public figures right through public figures even inside the public figures you just promote different types of drugs like that and 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 people love sometimes people love these public figures even adolescents they love public figures and etc as a result of that sometimes you know they might get addicted to these drugs as well i do receive a number of calls from parents especially right parents are perhaps they are they are suffering a lot from, because of this issue and they complain you know how their children are suffering from these things and etc and even children they they steal certain things from their parents to uh, get more to purchase uh, yes drugs. to purchase uh, as well especially when it comes to uh, uh, psychology and also the drugs and psychology there is this you know the word called you know tolerance sometimes you if you take you know for instance if you take this amount of a uh, 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 drug to gratify yourself next day you will need you know more like that you know you have to purchase more and more then when you are when you are running out of money of course you have to steal sometimes you know uh, that's what actually parents have complain about so we have been dealing about this we have we have been dealing uh this issue and why do we have to talk about these issues again and again shenali because uh this is not sorted out yet and that's why the the demand for drugs has not been decreased as mr ajit also said that it's the responsible of the society as well now uh, as you said doctor now parents are concerned now children have become a primary target um so why do you think children are targeted at this point now the drugs has been usually been popular and had been dealt among you know the middle age crowd or the older generation but right now it's been prevalent amongst children and the adolescents as you mentioned why have they become a primary target now yes because now as i mentioned uh, in 19 in in 19 Uh, 70s 80s 1990s so all the time i mean if we analyze the statistics so the adults so elderly people so they had been using drugs uh, especially uh, morphium cocaine uh, heroin cannabis but now the trend has been changed because the children are in the vulnerability and i mean everyone can instigate them that is the main reason that is the main reason so the i mean drug mafia is being widely spread all over the world so therefore so they need customers so we uh, the the law enforcement authorities 
or the NGOs, INGOs. So they are conducting various programs in order to curtail drug maintenance and in order to reduce the customers. So however, now I think the drug traffickers and the, the uh, other, I mean their followers, they have identified the, the, the vulnerable groups and so they uh, go to that particular group and then thereafter they spread it. And um, as uh, doctor mentioned, I have been observing for, I mean, two, three months now, this negative media publicity is also, I mean, one of the, the reasons. Now, uh, uh, I mean, in the recent past, so all the TV channels or the, the print media, YouTube channels, so they highlighted the issue, but you don't have uh, uh, a desire to take drugs and I don't have a desire to take drugs. But if the children are inquisitive on that uh, due to this, uh, this negative media publicity, so sometimes so automatically uh, they, might be, uh, they might be instigated, so they might be persuaded to, to take drugs. So that is one of the main problems that uh, I have identified the main issues and apart from that uh, uh, especially uh, in the coastal areas uh, the, the where the, the tourist industry uh, conducts. So generally uh, the children you know after school so they go to beach so they go to hotel areas so then uh, they associate with uh, adults or their friends and uh, automatically so they uh, become uh, drug addicts and sometimes drug traffickers. So we have to identify, correctly identify the two groups in this particular scenario. So number one, drug traffickers, drug dealers and the the drug kingpins, so they are they are in the one category. So the other category is drug addicts. So drug addicts means so they are patients actually. So I mean they are having a sickness and they need money. Now we have analyzed the crime figures. Uh, I mean no generally in Sri Lanka regularly some crimes are reported. The main crime in respect of property is housebreaking and theft. Housebreaking and theft. Then the second one is robbery, snatching, you know, chains, necklaces, or you know, snatching rings and all these. Pickpocketing. Yeah. Then motorcycle and three wheel theft generally generally in the country 30 to 40 cases are reported daily so what is the reason what is the reason so once we arrested the suspect and we come to know that the majority of the offenders are drug traffickers because if a sorry the drug addicts not drug, drug traffickers, drug addicts. So if I am a drug addict, so if I am going to have drugs, consume drugs two times a day, I have to spend minimum 6,000 rupees, 6,000 rupees. So 6,000 into 30, 180,000, so 180,000. So as a government servant, so I am not getting that, 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 that much of money. So how do you, that apart from that, that is for drugs. And apart from that, you need to eat, you need to, I mean, buy. Uh, the daily necessities. Yes, yeah, daily necessities, clothes and all these things. So, I mean, after that, you need to bring cigarettes or something. So therefore, his monthly, his monthly, sometimes expenses are 250,000. So how does he get that money? So definitely he should commit a crime. So therefore, I mean, we have analyzed the crime statistics and we have analyzed the modus operandi of the uh, 
the perpetrators and 90% of the perpetrators in respect of housebreakings, robberies, a snatch theft, motorcycle theft, three-wheeler thefts are drug addicts. So this is, this is a disaster actually, this is a disaster just like a terrorism, just like a, a, a terrorism because so during Prabhakaran uh, was conducting the war, committing crimes, so many people were killed and apart from that uh, many people were injured. Likewise these days, so the people are not killed but gradually, so they are losing everything and the whole society is affected. So therefore again, what I need to emphasize is that, so everyone has a responsibility, everyone has accountability. All over the world, if you take the statistics, now this particular problem, drug menace and the issue is being spread all over the world and the target group is school children. So parents, school teachers, adults, so they have a responsibility and the law enforcement agencies, we have a responsibility. And the other thing is, now we, we are an island, island nation. We don't have heroin, we don't have ice. So the locally cultivated drug is uh, cannabis. Apart from that, all drugs are trafficked and imported. So therefore, uh, we have a, a special mechanism uh, implemented by the Police Narcotic Bureau along with a special task force, Sri Lanka Navy, Sri Lanka Customs and Immigration Department in order to deal with this issue. And we have identified uh, 12 main drug traffickers. Uh, actually, they are not in the country. They are in foreign countries, especially uh, they are in the Middle East and uh, the countries in the vicinity of Middle East area. So we do our best to uh, arrest them, apprehend them, and bring them back to the Sri Lanka. But on the other hand, um, the, the whole society has a responsibility uh, to protect their children, protect the, the adolescent groups, youngsters, I mean preventing uh, drug use and drug abuse. I would like to know more, sir, about this special program that you all have been conducting and also on the point that you mentioned that drug addicts are having some sort of mental illness. So I would like to get a doctor's opinion on that as well. But before that, we have to go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon. You're watching Gen XYZ. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we have been in discussion with uh, Ms. Dajit Rohana, the senior DIG in the southern province and also Dr. Ashok Priyadarshana who is a psychologist and a lecturer. Now I think in the first segment we have we just left off with you Ms. Dajit saying that you know why this has been prevalent amongst the young people and also something that you mentioned was now amongst those three categories that you mentioned dealers, traffickers and addicts. The addicts might be having some sort of illness. So with that point, I want to pose the question to you, doctor. Is it necessarily have to be that someone needs to be mentally ill in order for them to consume drugs? And also, is there something that parents need to look out for in some sort of symptoms that they can look out for uh, so that they are aware of this situation? Uh, well, Shanali, one does not have to have uh, psychological disorders all the time to take, you know, drugs. But uh, if you take drugs, for instance, there can be, you know, certain drugs which which can, which can result in certain hallucinations, right? Hallucinations in the sense to 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 to, uh, to elaborate on what you know hallucination is, which means that there are certain unrealistic. Uh, visual stimuli as well as in you know, auditory stimuli that would be experienced by certain individuals when they consume 
certain uh, drugs. So, there can be certain drugs which can stimulate these uh, hallucinations and which can be problematic, which can result in uh, psychotic illnesses. And, and, and in the meantime, we have seen certain uh, examples like uh, the, the correlation between certain crimes as well as certain psychotic issues. And these psychotic issues could be once again uh, stimulated and could be provoked through certain drugs. So, that is that is one of the issues. On the other hand, when it comes to uh, drugs, of course, we know about stimulants. There are certain stimulants, there are depressants as well as uh, certain other types of uh, 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 types of uh, 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 drugs. But uh, uh, once you get used to it, right, it, it, it results in something called alternative consciousness. Alternative consciousness in the sense you want to get rid of this uh, realistic world and you just like to be being be in an alternative consciousness that makes you really relaxed. If, if like I, at the very beginning like I asked, uh, if I ask the question why would you take drugs to get rid of this in other reality? That is one of the answers perhaps one of uh, one, one uh, particular person would say. And this alternative consciousness would not you know, persist for a long period of time. Once again, you just go, come back to the altern I mean, the realistic world. Then you have to uh, experience the alternative consciousness once again. There, you need more drugs to go back to this, you know, the alternative consciousness. When someone is in this alternative consciousness, so the basically the thoughts and the mindset would manipulate the individual. In such scenarios, we don't know what 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 people people do after they are addicted to something because of this you know the alternative consciousness so certain drugs can result in this in the alternative con consciousness and that can be problematic as well on the other hand when someone is having certain uh, psychological uh, disorders like depression uh, they once again they want to get rid of their daily routine and 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 they want to uh, get away from it they want they want to get rid of it so in such scenarios as well they might uh, they might depend on certain uh, drugs as well. So these things are often, you know, found in our our, our cases uh, normally. So does it actually help? Like people take drugs in order to get away from the reality? Just for a moment, it can be helpful. But you know, once again, we should not say that you know it's going to be helpful because I have seen through social media, the uh, there were certain you know uh, uh, advertisements and there are certain you know statements saying that you know this particular drug is uh, good for this and etc. But in the meantime, if the person gets addicted, I mean, if that is called reinforcement. If that gives you kind of you know reinforcement, you just get addicted. You, know, you might have heard of this you know the operant condition in theory, right? The, which where actually you are your behavior is rewarded by certain certain you know uh, external or internal aspects, internal factors. So it's always dangerous. It, it can be dangerous because trial and error is all is not going to be uh, effective all the time. Once you once you try out something, and that can be you know problematic uh, later on. Just for a, just for a moment, it can be okay, but you know, in the long run, that can indeed be you know problematic, undoubtedly. So, doctor, what are the long-term effects that uh, will occur when you take drugs? So, long-term effect in the sense, you know, the psychological or physical. Both ways. About. Yes, uh, psychological, of course, you know, uh, 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 memory loss is one of the one of the one of the key. Uh, problematic you know concerns that we have in the meantime uh, especially family issues family issues has been family issue has issues have been the major issue because they are having conflict with their uh, parents and also the domestic violence is also there because like I said we cannot forget the term you know the alternative consciousness when they are driven by this you know the alternative consciousness uh, what what we can experience is that domestic domestic violence is there because these hidden impulses can be provoked through external uh, stimulants and also these particular drugs. So that is why we always say never ever try even you know uh, a single try can put you into hot water. All right, uh, coming back to you, Mr. Ajit. Now you told in the first segment that the supply needs to be reduced. Why can't we stop the supply completely? Why not? Why should we just reduce it? Is there any way of stopping this completely? Because as far as I know, this drug menace has been prevalent for the past um, past years or decades, I would say, and this has become a main issue now with the school children. 
So according, as you mentioned, there are so many protocols that have been put into place and you all are coming up with special programs to stop this drug menace. Is there any way that we can stop this completely? It's a good question. Actually, this drug network is not confined to only to Sri Lanka. So it is a global network. It's a global network. Everywhere, elsewhere, drug traffickers are there. Then their followers are there. So they spread it. And apart from that, they use various strategies. I think uh, you may remember uh, five years ago, so they send drugs along with gas cylinders. Then thereafter, along with grease tins. Then after that, sugar shipments also. Sugar I shipment. Read also. about it. So various strategies, different strategies they use, not only in Sri Lanka, but also uh, in the globe. But uh, as I mentioned, as we are an island nation, I have a strong belief that if the society, the all stakeholders, if we work together, so definitely we can eradicate drug menace in the country. But on the other hand, now the drug users or the drug addicts. So we need to control them and we need to cease in joining young people or the others to the drug addict community. So they have a very big responsibility. And especially on this program, I would like to mention and say something to the school children or the youngsters uh, advice. I have been observing the behavior and conduct of drug addicts. And apart from that, so sometimes, so they like to go for rehabilitation, voluntary rehabilitation, and they are rehabilitated. And they come out from the rehabilitation camps as normal person, normal citizen. But the problem is this. So if you are caught with drugs, cannabis, cocaine, heroin, I mean methamphetamine like uh, ice. So your name is in the, the police offender list. After that, if you are released, so you are not convicted, you have been rehabilitated and you have been produced to the produced in courts and sometimes you have been fined. If you need to go to another country, so you need a police clearance certificate. So now you have been addicted and you have given, every, given up everything and you have been rehabilitated and you are a good person and you are trying to adjust your life, to change your, reform your life, but you need to go to another country. Then they are asking a police clearance certificate for visa. Then once your name is entered or your ID card number is entered, so automatically that black mark is there. The system says that you have been arrested with drugs. You have been arrested then and uh, now I am, as I mentioned, I am serving in uh, the southern province. My office is at Matara. A boy came from Pitabadar area three days ago. Now, that particular boy, he has sat for this Korean language examination and he got through the examination and the Foreign Employment Bureau has selected him to send to Korea. But at the age of 16, when he was a schoolboy, 
he had been arrested by the police along with cannabis and he has been fined 15,000 rupees. So now this boy was crying in front of me and requesting me to not to mention, I mean inform that particular police to not to mention that particular thing. So how can we do it? So it's, I, I was very sad at that time because I cannot do it or if you are going to hide something then we are liable and he has been selected and the, the, the Foreign Employment Bureau was expecting to send him to uh, Korea in two weeks time but it's a pathetic situation. So likewise, so my advice is sometimes your friends would say that okay you can study, sometimes your friends would say that your, your bad friends would say that, okay, you can forget everything, forget the, the past, you can take it. Or sometimes your friends would say that, okay, you can get the sleep and you will have a, 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 a very good uh, night, but these, all these are myths. So therefore, don't believe in those words. And even don't try, never ever try narcotic substances. So that is my message. Thank you, sir. That is absolutely a very, very important message that you put out there. Of course, like adolescents, uh, like children are, you know, curious to try out these drugs. And, you know, some people might say, yeah, I'm trying this for the first time. I just want to see the effects of this. Like, is it true what people say, whether you are escaped from reality and these hallucinations and all of that. So, as you said, sir, even once if you try, there's always that black mark if you get caught. And uh, with that, we have to go into a short commercial break. We'll be still in this discussion. We'll be back soon. You're watching Gen XYZ. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we have come to our last segment of this program and we've been discussing about the drug menace here in Sri Lanka and we have been in discussion with uh, Mr. Ajit Rohana, senior DIG in the southern province and also Dr. Ashok Priyadarshana, psychologist and lecturer. Now since we've come to the last segment, we don't have much time yeah, to talk yeah. about a lot as well. I would like to pose a question to you, Doctor. Now, the integration process is going on here in Sri Lanka, and especially a lot of question and answers have been putting out with the police meeting with younger people. How is this effective to a certain point? And do you think that this will have an effect mentally on students afterwards? Because right now they have put been put into a point where they are pressurized in taking drugs and they've tried something new and now they're scared and they're put into a, another tough spot where they've been, you know, inter it, of course, I respect the authority and they have to go through this process. Yes. So, but what are the effects that the child will go through mentally because of this? Right, actually, uh, you asked a very good question uh, from uh, senior DIG uh, previously, right, and whether we could, you know, seize this, you know, the drugs entirely. Actually, what we are trying to do is that when it comes to, when we are addressing this issue, basically, as professionals, what we are trying to do is that, so there are three three layers in it, actually. One is this, you know, uh, the detection and the prevention and also the rehabilitation. So, detection is not our task, basically, but, you know, the prevention as well as the rehabilitation, that is our task. So, we are basically, you know, focusing on adolescents nowadays because, you know, there is this, you know, the huge... Uh, uh, we'll say um, discussion on them, you know, whether they are addicted to, to you know, certain drugs like ice and etc. Uh, when it comes to adolescents, actually they are known rebels, right? Psychologically speaking, they are called, you know, rebels. Rebels in the sense, they are, they are looking for experiments. They love to experiment certain things. Uh, they like to, you know, pop out their, we'll say, the personality and boost their personality and, and show off certain things like that and and so as a result of that it is easy easy for certain you know drug dealers to you know catch them so that is the issue so what we are trying to do is basically is that we try to make them aware so we stick to this particular model called health belief model there of course we try to make them aware we try to educate them and we try to 
you know, uh, make their personality in a, in a solid way. That is what we are trying to do. But once you are addicted to something, it's really hard to, you know, reverse it back. You know, that is there. Addiction is ad addiction as well as dependence. It's really hard to, you know, take them back. So before, before they get addicted to something, we have to make them, you know, aware of this aspect. That is what we are trying to do. And that is what we, uh, what we are trying to do these days even. And because once you get addicted, so there can be certain uh, uh, issues like uh, deviation, deviation, this in de uh, de deviant behaviors are also possible, which means that they are deviating from their day-to-day -day activities and also the dysfunctioning in the sense they are not able to properly function. Uh, in the meantime, danger. So they can, on, on their then, you know, they, 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 they might harm themselves as well as harm others. Like I said in the, in the in, in, in previous discussion, I mentioned about uh, alternative consciousness, consciousness and as a result of that, you might harm yourself as well as harm others as well and on the other hand when it comes to uh, 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 addiction if it is if it, it, has, if it has become an addiction obviously when the drug is not seen when the drug is not seen the person is, is experiencing you know, distress so those four things are always possible so we make people we make students we make children and we make all all the individuals aware of these aspects before before they get addicted to something that is our task basically so because uh, prevention is always better than cure so we have to prevent them from you know taking all these uh, drugs and we try our level best to do it uh, before they get addicted to something all right so next question to you mr ajit now since we are reaching the the end of our program as well something that came into my mind was you know i'm going to read off a statement from a newspaper newspaper now last year nearly 120000 heroin users in sri lanka a parliamentary committee has been established under the direction of president uh, ranil wickremesinghe to legalize cannabis as an export product and the first official meeting of the committee was held and this was for medicinal purposes now as you mentioned uh, we started off with cannabis it was illegal in sri lanka then came heroin now it has the most prevalent one is uh, nice. crystallic uh, meth so now with all of this uh, situation with the drug menace in Sri Lanka, do you think it's the right time to legalize another drug, uh, cannabis? Uh, especially the whole society is affected with heroin and ice. Um, I, I mean, we detected uh, the drug traffickers and drug addicts and the majority of them are detected with uh, heroin and ice. But uh, I mean, I, I am not going to say anything about the government policy, but it has been categorically mentioned that only for export purposes. So therefore, now at the moment also, also uh, the, our Ayurvedic department, so they need cannabis and sometimes it is imported uh, from uh, uh, India. So therefore, I mean for the in internal um, consumption, there is a requirement, so therefore uh, uh, yes, sir, they, I have agree. A, they have a, they have a need, uh, Definitely. but uh, if there are rules and regulations and if there is a proper monitoring system uh, is uh, implemented, uh, if it is the government policy, so uh, I don't think that it would it it would be a problem, but uh, we need to concern on heroin and I especially uh, because uh, I, I think in the recent past there was an incident happened in Kotahena, Colombo area. Uh, a six month year, six month old boy was thrown out uh, through the the window by a drug addict, yes, yes. Uh, drug addict person. So therefore that type of brutal crimes could happen. And in order to uh, prevent uh, that type of situation, so we need to take a stern action. And uh, my, uh, my personal perception is uh, the capital punishment uh, should be, now at the moment it is imposed, but it is not implemented. But uh, especially for these drug traffickers, the big drug kingpings, so they should be prosecuted and the capital punishment should be implemented against them. Otherwise, uh, we are not able to uh, eliminate uh, 
uh, drug problem in our country. And uh, finally, I need to give a, a, a message uh, to uh, the the general uh, public especially the parents. So, you have a duty. So, all the time monitor your son's behavior especially and if he is asking additional money. So, monitor uh, I mean what type of expenses that uh, he is having and apart from that the teachers you are having a responsibility uh, and so all the time uh, the students also uh, need to uh, create a courage in their mind that under any circumstances I never ever take drugs. If I am instigated, so if I am stimulated, so I am not going to take drugs. So with that uh, I mean thought if they are going to do it or if they are going to uh, I mean pass their day to day life, so definitely uh, we would uh, we, we the the society on one hand the law enforcement agencies but on the other hand the other stakeholders we can uh, minimize drug maintenance in this country and finally i think you said something somebody is saying and uh, i would like to <coughs> mention a saying of uh, martin luther king so martin luther king uh, uh, once uh, said that uh, if you cannot fly you must run. If you cannot run you must walk, if you cannot walk you must crawl, if you cannot crawl then keep moving forward all the time. So, therefore, so sometimes there are things that we can do immediately there are things we cannot do immediately, but in order to in order to uh, eliminate this problem. So, the society we have a pivotal role and everyone should uh, implement I mean perform their duty. All right. Thank you so much, sir and doctor, for giving your insights on this problematic um, issue that has been, you know, spreading like wildfire here in Sri Lanka. And I believe in this program also, both of you all mentioned some very important points and very good messages as well. And I hope our viewers will take something out of this program as well, especially the parents who are watching this so that they can be aware about their children and be cautious about what they are doing in the future as well. And let's hope that, you know, this problem will be eradicated 100% hopefully in the near future. Again, thank you so much for taking the time to join me on the show. Thank you. Thank you. And that was our episode on Gen XYZ. We will be back again next week with another problem or issue or topic pertaining the youth. Just in case you couldn't watch us on air, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Stay safe and have a good night.